guys, I'm Bulma. Welcome back to Yarnum, fellow Hoontas. I'm here with my disembodied wolf head, Pip. I am the party god. <laughs> and as I said, we're back with some Bloodborne. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. And we have heard some interesting things today about Bloodborne, actually. Right, Pip? Yes, indeed. Seems like a lot of people are theorizing that... <gasps> Bloodborne <laughs> 2 is on the horizon. Uh, I, please. I really please. hope so. That'd be awesome. It's the next logical step. I mean, Bloodborne sold all of the copies, was a system seller. Uh, and they just have so much stuff coming out now. Like, they just oh, came God. out with new a whole bunch of new oh, merch no. last month. Oh, no. and so they're coming out with a new comic for Bloodborne. Yeah, February 2018. And, and there's, like, all these cool new figures and you stuff. And some these. are planned for next year and as well. And now they are taking Demon Souls off the servers. Yeah. So we won't have Demon Souls to fall back on to to play with your friends anymore, unfortunately. That's a little sad, but I mean, you still have you still have the game, which is cool, but you miss out on those little messages, which are so hilarious. Just like um, I saw, I was playing Dark Souls, might... <laughs> and there was a guy like bent over a, a casket, and the little message said, "If only I had a long finger." <laughs> like, I believe we are actually going to run across one such message in this very video. Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> like, it just makes the game a little more fun and you get to interact with the other people and... Well, I mean, one might, invade. one might say that it's almost crucial to the game if you're not using walkthroughs or yeah. anything of that nature because, you know, you'll miss a lot of stuff. And oh, jump here. <laughs> guys, guys, I've beaten Dark Souls 1 I don't know, ten times at least. I was just watching someone play a, a, a game, like a playthrough the other day, and they found a bonfire in Sen's Fortress that I had never found before. Really? I was blown away. That's <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I was blown away. Like, what? Wow. So, I mean, you know, these games have a lot to offer, a lot of content. They're, they will suck away your time. Oh, yeah. Even after beating it, there's so much replayability. All right, we got Balma playing here. She's a little rusty. Yeah, excuse the rust. A little rusty, a little rusty. For anyone who plays, you, um, I'm stuck on Orphan of Cost right now, on my actual game. I mean, to be fair, I, I've only beaten the Orphan of Cost one time. I beat him with a summon, like another another person, and he died during the fight. <laughs> and I squeaked through with no health and zero healing potions. It's just so daunting, like. Ugh. So, I, I mean that that fight is is gnarly. And then I just see a video of someone. Oh yeah, just parrying him. Just him. parries and parries. With him. no weapon, like they were just fisting him, like. Mm-hmm. I was. Oh no, if you're really good at your parries, this game will be much less difficult. I'm not so bad at them in Bloodborne. In Dark Souls, I don't know why I can't really nail it. <laughs> but, you know, got my little gun. <laughs> Popping it, you know. It's a frames thing. Everything's a lot smoother in this. Yeah. Oh. Um. Uh, if any of you have not seen it, uh, there is this movie. It came out this year, right? Get Out? It came out yes. this year, I believe. Um, a very interesting concept. I loved it. Uh, yeah, I, like, I just saw reviews for it, and I was like, this is absolutely nuts. Um, it's on Netflix now. No, it's it was on HBO. 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 Excuse me. And. It is definitely worth the watch if you have it. Um, uh, I don't want to spoil. We'll, we'll go into a. We're going to talk about it for a moment here without spoilers, if we can help it. We'll keep it as spoiler free as can possibly be. Yeah. Um. Guys, I'm, I'm lying. Now we're not even going to go into it because <laughs> I can't really think about how to explain this without just spoiling it. But. 
I, mean, I just sat here and thought about it. No, no, I can't talk about it, actually. It's good. It's really good. Uh, if you're like me, I don't really care for horror movies. I don't find them scary yeah. at all. I find them tedious most of the time. This one was really good. Kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. It wasn't scary per se, but it, it was... It was freaky and off-putting. Like... Yes. It was good. It the was performance good. Performance from these actors were, especially the the female lead. Yeah. I don't remember her name. The, whoever directed it, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, it was his first movie that he directed. Oh, really? Incredible, incredible. I didn't know that. If you're a fan of film, there are a lot of little neat things to pick up on, like Allison cam Williams. camera angles and uh, the way that certain lines are delivered. It it's amazing. Highly recommend if you guys have the HBO. Oh, yeah. If you don't, uh, I'm not saying that I support piracy or anything, but <laughs> there are websites, you know what I mean? Oh, and real quick, uh, we've been wanting to give a shout-out to Kelly Smith at the Elgato Technical Support. Oh, Kelly Smith. Called her up a few days ago when we were working on the computer and fixing all of this audio issues we have, and she just fixed everything in like 30 minutes on the phone. Like, yes. She's a godsend. She totally deserves a raise, a bonus, I don't know. She... Go smooth. I've talked to other people from there, and she's going around the bush, like, come on, like, y'all are supposed to be the ones to know this, and she just, Oh yeah, we, we talked we talk to like four different people and they're all like, giving us the run around. Kelly Smith laughed and said, oh, no problem, hold on. <laughs> Check this out, guys. All your problems are fixed. Wave of the hat. Yeah, so big thank you to her. Now we're gonna, we're gonna give a slight pause in the, in the recording here to oh, listen oh, to uh, our favorite, our I'm favorite character in the game. <laughs> what a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights, here to welcome the new hunter. Eileen the Crow. Prepare yourself <laughs> for the worst. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. Still lingering about. What's wrong? A hunter unnerved by a few beasts. <laughs> no matter. Without fear in our hearts, we're little different from the beasts themselves. Gotta shake off the cake. What are you still doing here? The best you emote in the game. In the <laughs> a hunter must a hunt. hunter. Must hunt. Ah, I love Eileen. Absolutely, my favorite character in like the entire series. <laughs> like Dark Souls and Demon Souls. I don't know why. Just maybe it's because of the way she says "hunter." <laughs> Is that it? Can that be the only reason? <laughs> hmm. It's definitely a very nice factor to her. Character. <laughs> <laughs> she's got that cool voice. She's just, oh, she's. Just She's a badass. She's a badass. Beast. She's a bamf. <laughs> Chopping the cherry trees. That's not really a cherry tree, Pip. <laughs> a little more dark. And well, you know. <laughs> cordwood, whatever you want to call it. Who cares? It drops loot. <laughs> That's all you are to me. The people loot. <laughs> the people loot. <laughs> So recently, we have, uh, we watched Lego Batman the other day. Oh my gosh, Lego Batman. <laughs> that was a fun one. I was hoping, you know, I was like, Lego Movie was amazing. Lego Movie was, was definitely a lot better than it, I think anyone was expecting it to be. 
I like I saw it on a whim. Like I was at work one day and a customer came in and we started talking. And then the other, like the next day, they're like, "Hey, you want to go see the Lego Movie with me?" And I was like, "What? Okay, sure." I was like, oh, "Kid Movie? What?" I was blown away. Just, like the cast in it and really charming. Lego Batman movie. A little less charming. <laughs> but, but still really good. It had its moments where I was like, they're still doing this. This is still going on. But then it just pop in with like some good joke, some really great humor. I'm like, okay, you got me back on. Like, yes. I can forgive the lengthy parts. Will Arnett uh, <laughs> plays Batman. Great choice. Also, also, if you're if the name Will Arnett doesn't ring an immediate bell, think Job from Arrested Development. Bojack Horseman. Bojack Horseman. He's he's good. I, I like Will Arnett. And Michael Sarah playing alongside him as little Robin. That was funny. Great choice. Yes. <laughs> they even did. A, they even dropped an Arrested Development reference. <laughs> yeah. It, it was good. But what was it again? It, he was, uh, he was like, Mio, that's brother in yeah, Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that, yeah. <laughs> that means brother in Spanish. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tio. Was... Uh, no, no, it's not wrong. I don't speak Spanish, guys, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I, was a I was actually just talking to someone the other day uh, who speaks very fluent Spanish, and I was telling her when I was in school that uh, the very first thing they taught me to say in Spanish class was no habla espanol. And I thought, isn't that kind of counterintuitive? I mean, I'm trying to learn the language here and the first thing you're teaching me to say is no, I do not speak Spanish. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> they were setting me up to fail on that one, I think. Yeah, that's a little backwards. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Hello, I don't speak Spanish, and here's a bunch of other <laughs> phrases following. I like, don't, I don't know how to speak Spanish, and I, and, I, and the only Spanish I know is this, is this sentence and the sentence explaining this one. <laughs> really? Are you serious? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Family Guy. Yeah. Oh, I did it wrong. I, don't, I only speak. I don't speak English. I only speak. I only say that sentence and the sentence explaining this one. Oh, are, are you serious? Okay. <laughs> family guy. Family guy, family guy. What happened? I know. Like, it just got old, that's all. It did. It that's did. all. But then, I mean, there's there's other shows that did, you know, I mean, I think South Park is still funny. I've seen s some family guy, and I'm like, mm. well, that got tired of me, but I don't... <laughs> what can you do? Oh! Caught you in the back there. Are you gonna take that? <laughs> oh man! Oh, I hate the end. Like everything is just so terrifying in this game. You know, I personally don't find this stuff very scary, <laughs> but th then I find very much stuff scary, like movies and things of that nature. It just really sucks you in, and you're lost in the environment and the sounds and these oh. things. Make. I've definitely. Uh, jumped out of my chair a few times when something yells at me from around the corner. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. What this game does is it does it without being an absolute dick jump scare. Which is nice and refreshing. The, the atmosphere just speaks for itself. It's quiet and brooding. Alright guys, here we go. I'm gonna get Pip back in control here. <laughs> Do a little, do a little fancy. Oh, Get the little good. fancy feet going on. It's like, what are you doing on my bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Shrek got an upgrade. <laughs> he got kind of pissed after Fiona left him. Yeah. yeah. Open up. Oh, he's dead. Sorry, Shrek. Uh, no more sequels. <laughs> Good. Ooh. Good. Shrek 2 is the should've, best. Should've though. St should've stopped after the second one. The third one was. I really did. The third one was bad. And then wasn't there some weird, uh, some 
Donkey Dragon spinoff thing with the babies, and I was like, I saw I something. Believe. And then they, they also had another movie with uh, Rumpelstiltskin, I believe. Uh, I didn't. I think I remember putting it on, but I didn't absorb it. Yeah. I don't know what uh, the second one was. First one, well, the first one's okay. It's good, you know, it sets the groundwork. Second one, <laughs> the movie's great. I don't care what anyone says. Um, third one, got really preachy. Really preachy. Mm. I don't know, man. It's, it's, I don't want to do that. No, no. <laughs> That people make up their own mind on their own decisions. It usually works out best for everybody. Now, I mean, this isn't to say that if your opinion differs from ours, you're not wrong. I mean, you are. <laughs> but, I mean, you are entitled to be wrong. <laughs> Don't listen to me, guys. I'm wrong about so much stuff. It's It boggles the mind. But, you know... the. Part of the, the joy of being wrong is you can admit that you were wrong and then learn from it. Oh, we got our rat bashing guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> Going full Charlie Kelly here. <laughs> I'm going to even get an upgraded rat bashing stick here in just a moment. <laughs> Aw, yeah. Oh, woo! <laughs> rat bashing stick for all. Now the actual joke here is we're not going to use the extra, the upgraded rat bashing stick because, <laughs> well, we already have the best rat bashing stick in town. Oh yeah. X is for days. X is for days. You know what I, I actually kind of want to see, but I, the disaster artist. I've been watching, hearing about that. Yeah, I, I saw some things on it and then we watched a video on it yesterday. Yeah, from, um, was it Nostalgia Critic? Nostalgia critic, <laughs> nostalgia critic plug. <laughs> yeah, wait, uh, I mean, if you guys haven't heard of them already, I, what are you doing? You're watching us, we have like less than a hundred subscribers. Okay. He's got a million. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to watch the room first. Well, I've seen a lot of the. <laughs> I don't need to watch it. I already know. I kind of am curious. Uh, it's so bad. I can't. I just want to be mind blown, but... You know, but they hurt me and I just don't care anymore. <laughs> oh, Lisa! You're tearing me apart! <laughs> I, God. It's not his hurt. I, I'm not a huge fan of so bad it's good movies, but... Uh, I, I admit I've never even seen the movie and I find myself quoting it all the time. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious how... Oh, hi, Mark. ...the disaster artist came out. <laughs> I, I think it's still a conundrum to everybody. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, um, but, but for those who don't know, the disaster artist is a, a, uh, holy shit, I just spaced on the word. A documentary yeah. of the making of uh, The Room. Yeah. One of the most, no one of the most notorious, so bad it's good movies. <laughs> Woo! Come on, blood echoes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, check it out. We haven't checked it out, so we cannot actually give you a recommendation based on what we've seen. But we've heard good things. Yeah, the room's good. It has James Franco and his brother in it. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know if that's a selling point or not for you guys, honestly. After the deuce, that is not a selling point for me. <laughs> But if you guys have checked out the views on HBO, it's uh, I don't know, man. It's good enough. I, guess. I watched the whole season. I watched season one. I didn't turn it off. Yeah, I don't. But uh, they had. Do you guys remember the the first movie that Lindsay Lohan was in, the Parent Trap, where she had the, you know, the, the whatever effect it was, where you know. They had two Lindsay Lohans, and everyone yeah. was just blown away. Well, guys, they were... guys, brace yourselves. <laughs> brace yourselves some 20 years later, I believe. Yeah. We're doing it again with James Franco. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Stop. We are not amazed by Double this Franco. Technique, well, for, first of all, I, I know that they did it with Woody Harrelson in, <laughs> in the, uh, uh, what was that really 
flame series <laughs> about they were like magicians and the four horsemen. Oh. Now, now you see me or something. Yeah. Lame. Um. That was. They they did the w, double Woody Harrelson in it. You know, guys, I'm here to tell you if you're not aware, it's just a really cheap way to get double screen time out of an actor who they already <laughs> paid yeah. instead of just hiring another person. I... Get your lazy asses out of here. <laughs> Come on. Get first, out. first of all, the effect's terrible. Like, it it instantly breaks any sense of immersion that I was that I was getting. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the deuce, I'm watching the show. I was totally digging it, and then I see two James Francos yeah, on every the screen, time it's and, on screen, and they're so smug about it. They're like, "Yeah, isn't this effect just great, guys?" And oh. sometimes they just will interrupt a scene and cut to Double <laughs> Franco for no reason. Like, "Hey, guys, look what we can do! Check it out, Double Franco. Aren't you guys impressed?" Oh. And they just do it so often. And the other, the um, they're one of the one of the Francos is a complete asshat. <laughs> Like, One's an asshat and one, one pretends for, to be a good guy. It's like and, they're setting it up so they can kill off, the, you know, one of the Francos, the, hopefully the douchebag one, but they are still just playing around with it. Like, I was waiting the entire season. Oh, no, I guess I just kind of... Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Skip ahead about two minutes if you want to dismiss this, okay? I was waiting for the entire season one for Double Franco to die. I was waiting, yeah. waiting. It doesn't happen. Okay, so if you're watching season one and you're waiting for, for Double Franco to go away, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I, I don't know what they were thinking. And if they get a season two, I don't even... I oh, don't I'll, know why they would... If they do... I'll watch it. I'll watch it. It was good enough. But I mean... I, did, I didn't, I didn't watch other. Game of Thrones because it was good enough. I didn't watch I, Boardwalk Empire because it was good enough. I didn't watch, um... Breaking Bad, because it was good enough. You know, those these were great. And they made great decisions, for the most part, throughout it, you know. Oh, what can you do, though? Speaking of Game of Thrones, though, we've been watching The Frontier as well. Guys, I'm sorry if you were just getting tired of us talking about different games and movies and not talking about the game that we're actually playing. We'll get there eventually, I promise. <laughs> But, um, yeah, we've been watching The Frontier on Netflix with Jason Momoa. Cal Drogo. Cal Drogo, for those uh, <laughs> who are like me and not super good with names. Yeah. Like, oh, you're talking about this? Okay. Yeah. Um, starts off really strong. First two episodes, man, they get you by the balls. Yeah. I was, you know, I was the on next, board. The next three episodes so far have go on a complete 180 and they're making me long for the first two episodes. Yeah, there was, there were some really badass scenes in there and I was buying it. everybody in the, all the actors, you know, I was buying their performances and the time period and everything and then they try to have me believe that these Native Americans are just, ex like that this Jason Momoa's character is accepting of <laughs> this Irish guy, and they're just like, yeah, I'm gonna take his advice over small, you guys. Sp listen, small spoiler, guys. This isn't super big spoiler. Just at one point, there's a, a a little skinny white kid who joins the group, Irish kid who joins the group, and if, for those of you who don't know, Jason Momoa is a huge mountain of a man, okay? Huge. Huge, huge guy. Um... And they have this other character talking to the Irish boy, and he's talking, and they're, and they're saying, he sees himself in you. That made me laugh so hard. Like, first of all, no. No, this mountain, Call Drogo does not see himself in this hundred pounds dripping wet <laughs> Irish kid with, like, yellow teeth. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not buying. I'm not picking up what's dropping. No, no, it's re it's really silly, guys. Like they're trying to push. It's kind of like they're trying to push like a Tom Hanks in the Last Samurai thing. You know what I mean? Like the white guy is gonna be the savior of Tom the Native Americans. Did I say Tom Hanks? Yeah. No. <laughs> Could you imagine Tom Hanks in the Last? No. Samurai? No. Oh shit. 
You guys can feel free to downvote this video, man. I just insulted Tom Hanks. Please yeah, please don't. But you know. I love you. <laughs> we love you guys. But but I'll understand. I'll understand. I love Tom Hanks. Tom. <laughs> For some reason, this just made I can't me... get Tom Hanks wielding a samurai out of my head. My mind, every time I think of Tom Hanks, I just think of uh, this. I, I believe it was the uh, the Da Vinci Code, <laughs> Cinema Sins, The Da Vinci Code, oh. where he shows, like, it's Tom Hanks standing in front of a giant Nazi flag. And the Cinema Sins guy goes, I know it wasn't my play. I know I wasn't put on this earth to point out images like this, <laughs> but here you go. Yeah. That's what I always think of. And I'm just like, Man, how did that, how did no one ever catch that? How did that not become a meme, you know? It's because Tom Hanks is that amazing. People are like, well, we clearly have this great meme, but we're not going to use it because Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks. He's the most genuine, nice person. He's running around, just died from Father Gascoigne here. No, he didn't die. He didn't die? He died, I'm the man. Man, we haven't even gotten the Father Gas coin yet. No, not yet. We're just making our way through the sewers right now. On our way. What a, what we, uh, an interesting as, little as mentioned when we first started this in the first episode, we plan on scooching right along through this. Yeah. I'm talking one boss or two per video, at least. No, no scrolling around here. Nah, nah. Especially if the hype is to be believed and Bloodborne 2 is coming soon, God. Yeah, that... Oh. You know, guys, now we might just be talking out of our ass and this isn't gonna be a thing. Yeah, because there, you know, there's always it's that... All, it's, oh, there's a new game okay, for oh, yeah. no, This is, this is complete nice. conjecture right now, okay? Don't get super hyped, but... It does, it does look more promising than, um... It has. <laughs> yeah. It looks more promising now than it has looked. Because uh, not too long, a couple months ago, I was looking at some stuff on the Oh, you know the new blood one? But, because they, what is it, Prepare to Dine. They came out with some dine. advertisements for that, and I was like, ooh, turns out it'd be some other crappy. Ah. Uh. I'm not a that's that's some other game that's going to be coming out soon. Um, Code Vein. I don't even remember I think that's the name. What it was called. Guys, as far as I'm concerned, it's Anime Souls. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It didn't didn't look didn't look amazing to me, but you know. But this time the. And this isn't to say that I'm not a fan of anime. Oh, we are. Yeah. We here at the Daily Brief. We watch our anime. Yeah, we we got our little weeb status going on. Oh, over oh, here. oh we're low key weeb status. <laughs> I like the goodens, uh, Samurai Shampoo. We like our Cowboy Bebops and our, uh, you know, our Triguns. And Dragon Ball, of course. And of course, guys. Of course. Guys, guys. First of all, I wasn't even going to say Dragon Ball and Dragon <laughs> Ball Z because I just want to assume that you guys already understand that that's the number one. Now, if you weren't already aware of that. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You need to go train at Master Roshi's. <laughs> yeah, really. What's the, uh... Uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com slash the Bulma Brief page. Yeah, guys. We, we, we love Dragon Ball Z. We love Dragon Ball. Touches me in a way. It's right there in my heart. We love it. We love it so much that we're angry at Super. Oh. And, and we could talk about it, but you know, I will save this for like when we get a Discord server going on, and we can talk to you guys about it and hear your voices and opinions on the matter. Yeah. So this isn't a one-sided conversation. Exactly. That. Because we love it more than that, and we want to give it a fair shake. Oh, the balls of fire. <laughs> Good soup. Oh, yeah, and back to the, on the hospital Bloodborne 2, uh, Miyazaki said he's working on a existing IP. I yes, heard, yes. Yeah. Uh, is it Miyazaki? Yeah, Hidetaki, Hidetaka, Miyazaki. Uh, I, al I always get his name confused with the Studio Ghibli guy, yeah. the Studio Ghibli people. Yes, me too. <laughs> 
But um, yes, Miyazaki just came out and said that they are working on. Oh, I'm not. I don't want to misquote him. He said something like they're working on something that would be expected by yeah. the fans. You know, in, in direct. Yeah, a straightforward. A, a straightforward game. A straightforward thing that meets expectations. Yeah. Or so some like... something like that. Uh, Ugh, heard talk. And, and now the the people, you know, so he's either talking about a remake or a remaster of Demon Souls. Yeah. That would be great. Along with, I mean, we've got the Shadow of Colossus remake. I mean, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if there was going to be remakes of other, other big titles like that. A Demon Souls remake would not be surprising. It, it's honestly expected. It's the first game, you know, in the quote unquote air quote here series. Yeah. Um, a lot of people it. didn't play it because it was on P it was a PS3 exclusive. I I haven't gotten around to it, and I still would love to. Um, I have to admit, if they put out a remastered version, I would snap it up in a heartbeat. I wonder. Wouldn't it, I wonder if they would. Closed, except for closing oh. down the Demon Soul servers, and then what if they came out with a remaster? And then there's a would there be a new server? Like, would I wonder uh, undoubtedly they would make new servers for the remaster, wonder, they would take the old servers offline and put it up for the new ones. Ooh, I assume, Father Gas, creepy, cool. Oh, he's Father, just Father Gas, he's coin. just you times a hundred. Father Gascoin is a hunter who has lost most of his humanity to the growing disease so here in Yarnum. Once tasked with hunting down and ending the infection before it spreads, he has now succumbed to it. And he's got bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> Halitosis, guys. Brush your teeth. <laughs> Pull him a PSA. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Now guys, if you're wondering if I'm going to sit here and do this fight like a boss, I'm not. I'm going to cheese the ever-loving crap out of this guy. You can call me Chester Cheetah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, my first time playing, I didn't know about any of these little tricks or anything. I'm just running around the whole place trying to slash this dude, and he's just like... Rah! And then Pip over here is like, hey, you know, you can hide, you can get in the spot here in these graves and just cheese him for a bit. Now, if you all are wondering, man, is Pip really such a scrub? I've beaten him normally before. I didn't want to sit here and make you guys watch while I beat my head against the wall five or ten times before I could remember the patterns and get a little lucky. Yeah, speedy process. Yeah, speedy process, because there will be boss fights where there is no cheesing. And, and it's just going to be a test of might. A test of might. <laughs> a test of the A test of the spells. And for those not in the know here, you can use the tiny music box to make Father Gascoin in his beast form remember his humanity. Yeah, the little girl we ran into the window. This is his daughter. She asked, she asked us to go and find her mother who went off to find their father, Gascoin. She said, she said that we could notice her, we could find her mother through the, uh, by her red brooch that she wears. But this will come into play later. Uh, I don't, uh, unfortunately, I think Father Gascoin here is not... The yes, he has turned the cheeser into the cheesy. <laughs> he heard my Chester Cheetah joke and he said, <laughs> I'm the only, I'm the only animal hybrid in this room. Yeah, like I said, he's, you can, in the game later, finding it in the Chalice Dungeons, you can get your little beast mode activated. With Beast claws. And the beast claws. Really freaking cool, but gas coins here is like, oh, that's cute. Yes. You got little beast claws. Watch this. Yes, you have, you have something like that later on in the game where you can go full beast and jump around and be all crazy, but it definitely pales in comparison to <laughs> to Father Gascoin. Yeah. He just scoffs at you and. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, how cute. Yeah. 
<laughs> you thought you were a beast. Ah. <laughs> uh, now this is the ant hill effect of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. One and three. You know, really just Bloodborne and Dark Souls one. Three we had less of an ant hill thing going on. There's so many but uh, there was a little bonfires bit. in in uh, Dark Souls three. Yes. Where where two <laughs> was uh the way I understand it, the uh, team like the A team worked on Demon Souls. And then the A-Team worked on Dark Souls. And then while the A-Team was working on Bloodborne, B-Team worked on Dark Souls 2. And then A-Team went back to work on Dark Souls 3. This is how I've... This is how I have come to understand it. I may be a little wrong. Um, Dark Souls 2 is, dif is different from Dark Souls 1 and 3 and Bloodborne. I like it. I hear a lot of people don't. I think they're just haters. Just saying. I, I love the story. I love the... They improved everything greatly from Dark Souls 1 into Dark Souls 2. The only thing that really suffered was the layout of the areas. <laughs> oh, God. D Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne for here, for instance, it has an anthill effect where everything... Where's the ferret? Where's the fire ball? Where'd it come? Whoa! Okay. There we go, guys. Um, That's one on the O meter. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne have a very ant hill thing going on where you'll unlock shortcuts back into previous areas, and then when you're going back into future areas, you'll cut back through the middle of old areas, and it once you learn how to get to everywhere and you learn all the little ins and outs of the ant hill running through this map is so expedient in dark souls 2 they uh there's much more in dark souls 3 too for that matter dark souls 3 as well for that matter uh right there's much more of a linear thing going on where you go to one area and you hit the bonfire and you work through the area and then you go to the next area and then you work through that one, you get the bonfire and you go to the next one. Yeah. And some of the transitions are absolutely bonkers. <laughs> like, you you go into this place and you're going up, you're going up this big tower and you finally get to the top, okay? And you you can see the tower from the outside when, like, when you're walking up to it. There's nothing behind it, there's nothing else, it's a big tower, okay? You beat the boss, you go up an elevator in the boss room, woo, big long elevator, and all of a sudden you're in like Bowser's fire castle. It's, it's silly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Speaking of that, uh, I have, Oop. if you listen to N64 boss games, especially like Bowser or yeah. any of those like Mario levels while playing Dark Souls, I mean really just any game you should try it if you haven't. It is so fun, especially with like newer games. Yes, it works it, well. Sometimes it really fits, like. It works well. Endlessly entertaining. I like to play stuff in the background while I'm playing. Yeah, me too. Music or a If I'm alone, I play music. Sometimes it's not like that. Put on a little something in here in the background. Instead of just like, my axe. <laughs> <laughs> as cool as it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, these games, they don't, they really just rely on the, uh, the ambient sound in the background. To set the atmosphere and the tone and the mood. It works. It works really well. You can play this game without background noise or anything else going on. It will suck you in like a very, very bad analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some of you will see where I was going with that. Uh, here you go, guys. If you're if you're wondering, you can cheese phase two of Father Gas. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So I'm running around, popping on me, and I'm just getting my ass handed to me on a silver platter. Pip's like, hey, you know you can do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad. 
I'm bad. I'm really, really oh, bad. Shake off that cake. Oh yeah, it's good. <laughs> Another victory. Yes, yes. Well, guys, I think we're gonna start wrapping this up here in the relative future. First, we're going to go and find the fate. Find out the fate of the young girl's mother. Sadly to say, Gascoigne lost his humanity. And slayed his wife. Oh. Boo hoo. Not recognizing who, who she was because she did not have her music box. But guys, thank you very much for joining us today. Indeed. Daily uploads on the Daily Brief. We will see you guys next time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,